Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's recording. So, once again, I am repeating. In last class, we had discussed about network hardware. Network hardware mainly consists of two dimensions. First one, transmission technology, and second one, classification of interconnected processes by scale. In the transmission technology, there is the IGA classification. The classification is broadcast links and second one, point to point links. In broadcast links, there is a single communication channel and all the machines on that network share that single communication channel. Whereas in point to point links, there are so many number of connections between individual pairs of machines. So this is about transmission technology. And coming to the classification of interconnected processes by scale, the network is classified into personal area network, local area network, metropolitan area network, wide area network, and finally internet. In last class, I explained all those things. In today's class, we will go to network software. Previously, network hardware in computer networks, network hardware is given the utmost priority and the network software is given the secondary importance. But uh, in the due course of time, what happened? The network software is gained more popularity than network hardware. There are two reasons for that. So the first thing is, look at here, the first point. Network software is a highly structured one which reduces design complexity. Naturally, in the communication, there is so much complexity because it has to travel from one place to another place. There are so many interlinks, there are so many connections, there are so many transmission lines. So there is a lot of complexity. But in network software, it is designed in such a way that it is highly organized one. So due to the highly organized structure, it reduces the complexity. That's why it gained popularity when compared to network hardware. The second point is, the network software is designed in such a way that it can handle different protocols and services in efficient manner. The network software consists of so many protocols, it offers so many services, but all those protocols and services are organized in a very efficient manner. That's why with these two points, network software gained more popularity than network hardware. In today's class, we will go through the different subtopics that are associated with network software. The first one is protocol hierarchies. Second one, design issues for the layers. Third one, connection oriented and connection less services. Fourth one, service primitives. And fifth one, the relationship of services to protocols. So these are the five topics that are associated with network software. In today's class, we will discuss about protocol hierarchies. If time permits, then we will move to the second one. Okay. Okay, so in today's class, we'll discuss about protocol hierarchies. Okay now? Yeah, yes ma'am. So protocol hierarchies. Actually going into the uh, topic, first we have to know about what is meant by network architecture. Network architecture refers to the set of layers and protocols used in the network. It consists of layers as well as protocols. So what are layers and what are protocols? The combination of these layers and protocols is network architecture. So first we discuss about layers. So layers are, layers are nothing but networks that are organized as a stack of different layers or levels. So 
simply we can say that layers are nothing but networks so here the networks are organized in such a manner that they are placed one upon the another if there are two layers the uh, below one is the layer one and above that there is layer two so here the layers are nothing but networks and after that protocols protocols means set of rules or methods that are used in a particular way, layer so what are the set of rules and methods that are used in a particular layer are called protocols so the combination of these networks and the combination of these set of methods together constitute a network architecture network architecture consists of layers and protocols so once look at this figure so this consists of layers protocols and interfaces we will discuss all these things <coughs> sorry so here it is host one host one consists of five layers so five layers the top one is layer five below that layer four next layer three layer two and layer one similarly host two also contains five layers okay so here the host one may be a client and host two may be a server or vice versa here the host one may be a server and host two may be a client or both host one and host two may be servers or both host one and host two may be clients so whatever may be those two are machines so here host one consists of five layers and host two consists of five layers so here these five layers are nothing but the networks which are organized in a stack in the form of a stack and look at here the layer 5 is communicated with layer 5 in host 2 through a protocol. So we will discuss what is a layer and what is a protocol in detail. Okay. So layers. Layers are usually built upon the other. First I will go through the points and I will go to the uh, diagram and explain it clearly. First go through the points. Layers are usually built upon the other. Each layer has a distinct identity and performs a specific set of functions. Next, the number of layers, the name of each layer, the content of each layer, and the functions of each layer differ from network to network. So, go to the diagram. Look at here. Here, first part is the layers are placed upon one upon the another there are five layers so these layers are placed one upon the another so up the uh, on the layer one there is layer two upon the layer two there is layer three upon the layer three there is layer four and upon the layer four there is layer five so these layers are placed one upon the another so that is the first point next what is the second point the second point is each layer is having a distinct identity. So what is the meaning here? A distinct identity. Each layer is having a different name here. So here this is layer one. This is layer two. There is no coincidence of the names here. So there are five layers and those five layers are having five distinct names. Here we are using five layers and each layer is a different name. Each one is having a different name. And not only that, each layer performs different functions. The function performed by layer one is different from the function performed by the layer two. The function performed by layer two is different from the function performed by layer three. For example, if layer one performs encryption, then layer two performs multiplexing. Say layer three performs uh, congestion. Layer four performs flow control. So different layer is meant to perform different function. Even though there are many layers in a network, the function, the name of each layer is different, 
the function performed by each layer is different okay next third point is so how many layers the number of layers the names of the layers the functions of the layers and the contents of the layers listen carefully the number of layers some architecture network architecture may consist of five layers some consists of four layers some consists of three layers so the number of layers and the names of the layers here we are naming the layers as layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 layer 4 like that in some network architecture they may use as a application layer network layer data link layer like that the names may be different so the number of layers may be different the names of the layer may be different the functions of the layers may also be different some layers may perform flow control some layers may control may perform encryption some may perform multiplexing some may perform routing so the functions performed by the layers may change likewise the contents in the layer may also change so some layers may consist of hardware devices some layers may consist of software devices like that so the contents may also change so from network to network the number of layers can change the names of the layers may change the functions of the layers may change and the contents of the layers may also change okay so that is the third point the number of layers the name of each layer the content of each layer and the functions of each layer differ from network to network next next point each layer provides some services for the higher layer hiding details of how these services are actually performed this is very important point so the lower layer always provides services to the upper layer if we take the layer 1 this layer 1 provides services to the layer 2 look at the diagram here there is an arrow mark indicating from layer 1 to layer 2 that means here layer 1 provides services to the layer 2 similarly there is an arrow mark indicating from layer 2 to layer 1 bidirectional one so here layer 1 provides services to layer 2 and layer 2 accepts services from layer 1 okay in network architecture all this the lower layer provides services to the upper layer you have to remember it carefully the lower layer always provides services to the upper layer and the upper layer uses those services and provides services to the layer above it okay so likewise look at the figure here layer 1 provides the services to layer 2 layer 2 accepts services from layer 1 and here this layer 2 again provides the services to layer 3 and layer 3 accepts the services from layer 2 so simply we can say that layer 1 is the service provider and layer 2 is the service accepter the lower level is always the service provider and the upper layer is always the service accepted next coming to the uh, next uh, one more thing each layer provides some services for the higher layers hiding details of how these services are actually performed so how honest they are look at it they provides the services to the upper layer but they didn't reveal the information how they provide services to the upper layer they provide services but how how they provide that information is not revealed to the upper layer the upper layer simply accepts the data accepts the services from the lower layer but it doesn't know how the lower layer provides those information that information is hide by the lower layers next here in the layer there may be some components there may be some active elements that active elements may be hardware or software whatever may be that is known as layer entity you have to remember that term layer entity whenever the term layer entity comes it means it is a hardware or software that is inside 
¿Qué? Layer. Each layer has an active element of a piece of hardware or software which carries out the layer functions. It is called layer entity. Next one. So, what are the benefits of organizing the different networks in the form of layers? There are so many benefits. The first benefit is the various networking functions such as error detection, encryption, flow control, routing, multiplexing can be isolated. So what is meant by error detection, encryption, flow control? I will explain those in tomorrow's class, which is design issues for layers. In that, I will explain you each term. So one layer performs, for example, if one layer performs error detection, if layer two performs encryption, if layer three performs flow control. So likewise, different, different layers are performing different functions. So here, error detection is isolated from encryption. Encryption is isolated from flow control. So the two networking functions are not intermixing or they are not colliding because each function is performed by a unique layer. So there is no confusion. That is first advantage. Second advantage is separating various functions into different modules. The design process is simple and it is easy because one layer is meant for one specific function. One layer is meant for another specific function. So each function is isolated from one another. That's why here separating various functions are in different modules make the design process simpler and easier. Next, third important benefit is since these are the functions are placed in different modules, we can do research and development on each layer independently from another layer. If we want to do research in encryption, we can do research on that. If we want to make developments and recent developments in encryption, we can do it independently because they are separated from the other layers. So in order to do research and in order to make recent developments in the uh, network functions, it is easy because they are separated from one another. Next, last point, this approach also makes the network more flexible. It is flexible. If you want to add a new technique, if you want to make uh, add new services, or if you want to change anything in the network architecture in future, it is flexible because it consists of different layers. So if, if we want to change the layer one, we can change that layer one and we can add new things to that layer one, then it becomes a new architecture. If you want to make advancements in future, if you want to replace the layer two, then it becomes a separate network architecture. It is a flexible one because those network functions, those networks are arranged in different modules. So these four are the most important benefits of organizing the networks in the stack of layers. First one, different functions are isolated from each other. Next, due to uh, these are isolated from each other, the design process become easy and simple. And third one, research and uh, development is easy because they are independent. And the fourth one, new changes can be added to the existing network architecture because they are flexible. Next, protocols. So layers are nothing but networks. Then what are protocols? I had already told you protocols are nothing but sets of rules and methods that are to be followed by a particular layer. So there are some protocols for layer one, there are some protocols for layer two, protocols for layer three. There are separate, separate protocols for separate layers. So it is an agreement between the communicating parties in how communication is to proceed. So why those protocols are used? Those protocols are used because the communicating parties has to agree with each other how to proceed the communication. Okay, that means, again coming to the figure,
to look at the figure. So these are the layers we had already discussed about it. Look at the layer here. This is layer one protocol. Actually, there is a there is a dotted line between level layer one of host one to layer one of host two. Similarly, layer two to layer two. There must the lines are missing here. There are some dotted lines. Layer one protocol. Layer one protocol means it is an agreement between the layer one in host one and the layer one in host two. That means same layers of different machines agreed to each other to communicate with each other by a protocol that is known as layer one protocol okay so same layers layer one layer one but they are in two different machines these two machines take an agreement make an agreement for communication how to proceed the communication the agreement made by those two layers is known as protocol okay it is an agreement between the communicating parties in how communication is to proceed layer n on one machine carries a communication with layer n on the other machine with the help of a protocol so for example if here the n is one the layer one on host one carries a communication with layer one on the host two with a help of the layer one protocol okay layer one cannot communicate with layer two in another machine layer two in another machine cannot communicate with layer three in host one so the layers must be same if the layers are same then only there exists a protocol between those two communicating parties protocol always takes place between the same layers of different machines if layer one has to communicate in host one with host two then it has to communicate with only the layer one okay so that is shown in the figure so look in the figure layer one communicates the with the layer one that is layer one protocol layer two communicates with layer two that is layer two protocol layer three communicates with layer three layer three protocol similarly layer four protocol and layer five protocol so protocol means communicating with the same layers of different machines that is following the protocol protocol means following some rules you can't communicate with other layer in the other machine next thus a protocol enables peer entities of different layers to communicate with each other so there is host one host one consists of five layers there is host two host two consists of five layers but here the layer one in one machine want to communicate with the layer one in another machine that is done by this protocol so here this layer one and layer two are known as peer entities peer entities means same entities that means layer one layer one. okay a list of protocols used by a certain system one protocol per layer is called a protocol stack so you have to remember the keywords in the earlier slide i i said to remember you about layer entity layer entity means the components that is either hardware or software that is used in a particular layer is called layer entity next remember here protocol stack protocol stack means a list of protocols used by a certain system one protocol per layer in the diagram sorry in the diagram we see that there is layer 1 in host 1 and layer 1 in host 2 but the protocol is only one protocol layer 1 protocol so this list of protocols in a system is known as protocol stack so this stack consists of five protocols one protocol per one layer one protocol layer one protocol per layer 1 one. one layer one protocol is known as protocol stack these entities in same layer on different machine are sometimes called peers these are also called as peers same layer layer number is same but these two layers are on two different machines these are known as peers these peers may be either software or hardware devices or even human beings okay so these peers peers are nothing but 
layer entities. These layer entities may be hardware or software or human beings. These are called as peers. And next one, the entities in layer N implement a surface used by layer N plus one. So I had previously told that the lower layer always provides services to the higher layer. In this case, the layer N is called the service provider and the layer N plus one is called the service user. For example, if the layer is one, so it provides services to the N plus one, that is layer two. Layer one is a service provider and layer two is a service user. Layer one may use the services of layer N minus one in order to provide service. So here, layer one uses the service, sorry, layer two. For example, here N is two. Layer two uses the services of layer one in order to provide services to layer three. Don't get confused. Layer two accepts services from layer one. Okay, so here, layer one is the service provider and layer two is the service acceptor. So this layer two accepts the services from layer one and it becomes a service provider to the service provider to the layer three. So in such architecture, no data are directly transferred from layer N on one machine to layer N on another machine. This is virtual communication. Okay, once again, go to the diagram. So look at here. Here, the communication between layer one and layer one is not direct communication. It is a virtual communication. Only the direct communication takes place between the different layers of the same machine. You have to remember that. The communication between layer five and layer four is the direct communication from layer four to three direct, three to two direct, two to one direct. But the communication from layer one in post one to layer one in post two is virtual communication. Okay, and one more important thing is whatever the data that is transferred from layer 5 is transferred to the lower level, lower layer 4, and then to 3, then 2, then 1, and finally the actual communication takes place through this physical medium. Actual communication takes place through this physical medium which accepts the data in binary form. Okay, so after the data is communicated here it reaches the lower layer and again it reaches to the upper layer through the direct communication between the layers direct communication takes place and between the peers between the same layers of different machines virtual communication takes place there is no direct connection so that is explaining here Rather, all data and control information is passed from one layer to the other layer immediately below it. So from five, fifth layer to fourth layer, from fourth to third, from third to two, uh, two to one, and through the physical media, the data is transferred. The actual communication occurs through physical medium that lies below the layer one. So there is a physical medium which is below the layer one. So actual communication takes place there only. Therefore, we can say that there is no direct communication path between peer-to-peer -peer layer. So on the protocols, there is no direct communication. It is a virtual communication. They interact using the services of the lower layer. That is the important thing you have to remember. Next, for better understanding of uh, this process, I will explain this diagram. Okay, so once again, I'm repeating what are the important points we have discussed up to now. Layers means networks and protocols means rules that are to be followed by layers. Okay, always the lower level, uh, always the lower level provides the services to the upper layer. The lower layer is the service provider and the upper layer is the service user. 
Next, protocol. So protocol takes place between the same layers of different machines. Okay, up to now you have to remember that. So you will be better understand if I explain this example. So look here. This is location A and this is location B. Here in the here it consists of three layers, layer one, two, three. Similarly, in location B also consists of three layers, one, two, three. Layer three consists of a philosopher, and layer three also consists of a philosopher. Similarly, in location A, layer two consists of a translator. And in location B also, layer two consists of a translator. Similarly, in layer one, in location A consists of a secretary, and in location B, in the layer one consists of a secretary. Why? Because in order for peer-to-peer -peer communication, the layers all should be same of different machines. That is known as protocol. Protocol means rule. So here. The secretary has to communicate with the secretary only. The translator has to communicate with the translator only. The philosopher has to communicate with the philosopher only. The secretary can't communicate with the philosopher. The translator can't communicate with the philosopher. Here, the philosopher must communicate with the philosopher. The translator must com communicate with the translator. And the secretary must communicate with the secretary. So here, the communication between these two peers, peers means same. So philosopher, philosopher, here the communication is virtual communication. Likewise, here the translator, between the translators, there is virtual communication. Between the secretaries, there is virtual communication. Here, the actual transmission takes place here below this one. This is the physical medium where the actual transmission takes place. And there is direct communication between the philosopher to the translator and from the translator to the secretary. Okay, so I will explain you. This philosopher in location A, listen carefully, don't get confused. This philosopher in location A knows two languages. First one, English. Second one, Urdu. Urdu. Okay. The philosopher in location A knows two languages, that is English and Urdu. The philosopher in location B also knows two languages, that is Chinese and French. Okay, but here the philosopher in location A wants to communicate the philosopher in location B. But the languages, there are no common languages for these two philosophers. But the philosopher in location A want to communicate with the philosopher in location B. So what he want to convey is, I like rabbits. He want to convey this message to the philosopher in location B. But he knows only English and Urdu, and the philosopher in location B knows only French and Chinese. So how they will communicate? I know English. You all, you all know English. That's why, why I am explaining in English, you are able to understand. There is no another layer between us. But here, there is no common language for these two philosophers. So they need a translator. So that is layer two. Here, the layer two is a translator and there is a direct communication between this philosopher and the translator. Here, the philosopher said, I like rabbits. Now, this translator knows English. So what he did, he has to translate into either Chinese or maybe French. But here, this translator has no facility to communicate directly with the philosopher in location B. There is a protocol. He has to communicate with the same person in the layer two in location B. So who is there in location, in layer two in location B? Here is a translator. So this translator in location B has to communicate with the translator in location B. So here, there is one common language for both of these translators, that is Dutch, Dutch language. So here, I like rabbits is converted into some uh, sentence in the Dutch language. And here, the translator sends that information to the secretary in the layer one through a fax machine. So what here the secretary did, 
he sends that text message through the physical medium to the layer one in location B. So here the secretary receives whatever the message that is in Dutch language, he received that message. So that Dutch message is sent to the translator. So this translator translates that Dutch message into French language and he transmits it to the philosopher in layer three. So I like rabbits. What the philosopher in location A told I like rabbits in English is reached to the location B philosopher in French language. Okay, so in this way, the communication between the same layers are to be conducted. So that is a protocol. Layer one cannot communicate with layer two or layer three. Okay, that is protocol. So virtual communication takes place between the virtual communication takes place between the same layers of different machines and the direct communication takes place between different layers of same machines. Next, interface. So what is interface? We had discussed about layers, we had discussed about protocols, then what is interface in this diagram? So look at the layers. We had discussed about layers, we had discussed about protocols, then what is interface? So this interface is nothing but the, uh, the it exists between two adjacent layers. So this is layer one and this is layer two. So in between these two adjacent layers is the interface. So here layer one by two interface. The numerator indicates the lower layer and the denominator indicates the upper layer. So here the lower layer is one and the upper layer is two. So layer one by two interface. Similarly, layer two and layer three, layer two by three interface. Layer three and layer four, layer three by four interface. Layer four and five, layer four by five interface. So interface exists between pair of two adjacent layers. Okay, so interface defines rules and procedures for hierarchical communication. So protocols defines rules and methods for the different layers. And here interface defines rules and procedures for hierarchical communication. So what is hierarchical communication? So there are two types of communication that takes place in layered architecture. So there are two types of communication that takes place in layered architecture. First one is hierarchical communication and second one is peer-to-peer -peer communication. So what is hierarchical communication? I will explain you. So hierarchical communication, this is host one and this is host two. So in this example, I take only three layers, that is N layer, N minus one layer, N plus one layer. Here, N means two, two minus one, first layer, and two plus one, third layer. So first layer, second layer, and third layer. So here, if the communication takes place from layer two, to layer three to layer two, and layer two to layer one. So different layers in the same machine is known as hierarchical communication. Communication between different layers of same machine. The machine is the host one only, but here the levels are different. So communication that takes place between different layers of same machine is known as hierarchical communication. Next, what is peer-to-peer -peer communication? The communication that takes place between different same layers of different machines. So here layer two and here also layer two. But this layer two belongs to this host one and this layer two belongs to this host two. So the communication that takes place between same layers of different machines is called peer-to-peer -peer communication. And the communication that takes place between different layers of same machine is called hierarchical communication. Okay. So hierarchical communication, it occurs between the adjacent layers of a system for requesting and receiving services from the lower layer. And peer-to-peer -peer communication occurs between peer layers. Peer layers means same layers. 
such communication is enabled by protocol if layer one want to communicate with layer one in host two then layer one protocol is to be enabled if layer two in host one has to communicate with layer two in host two then layer two protocol is to be enabled so for peer to peer communication the protocol is to be enabled the data units that exchange between the peer entities are called protocol data unit this is also one important point you have to remember whatever data that is exchanged between peer entities peer entities means same numbered layers the data that is exchanged between the peer entities is called protocol data unit once again i will show the diagram so layer n entity here for example this n is 1 so this is layer 1 and this is layer 1 so this layer 1 belongs to host 1 and this layer 1 belongs to host 2 so here the exchange of data between these two layers it takes place only when layer 1 protocol is enabled and that data is known as protocol data unit and this n represents the number of the layer so for example here the layer is 1 so 1 protocol data unit okay so the data units that exchange between the peer entities are called protocol data unit these pdus are exchanged using the services provided by the lower layer as there is no direct path between the peer layers so there is no actual communication between the two peers there uh, between the layer 1 and layer 1 there is no direct communication it is virtual communication so that data has to be exchanged only through the direct path through the physical medium so from the physical medium it reaches the lower level from the lower level it reaches the higher level next interface exists between each pair of adjacent layers interface defines rules and procedures for hierarchical communication so what are the rules and procedures that are to be followed in hierarchical communication the data must always transfer from higher layer to lower layer look at the figure uh, once again so in host 1 the data is transferred from layer 5 to layer 4 from layer 4 to layer 3 from layer 3 to layer 2 from layer 2 to layer 1 and after that it travels through the physical medium so it is a rule the data has to be transferred from upper layer to the lower layer and after that it has to be transferred through the physical medium and when it reaches the host 2 it has to travel from lower layer to higher layer from layer 1 to layer 2 layer 2 to layer 3 layer 3 to layer 4 and finally it has to reach layer 5 in host 2 so these are the rules for hierarchical communication so it defines this interface defines the various primitive operations and services that the lower layers make available to the upper layers so what are the basic operations and the services that the layer 1 can provide for layer 2 what are the basic operations and services that the layer 2 can provide for layer 3 so this interface defines basic operations and the services that are available in the lower layer okay so once the clean interface is defined then it is very easy for deciding how many number of layers are to be included in a network architecture if we know the functions what is the function of the layer 1 then how many layers we can include in the network architecture is clear for example if we want to conduct some function okay so if we want to conduct some function uh, we request for flower decoration we appoint one person to bring flowers if we want to arrange some dinner for 500 members what we do we appoint one person to bring groceries we appoint one person to bring vegetables we appoint if it is a non veg uh, uh, dinner then we appoint one person to bring non veg so we require four different persons 
if we know what are the functions provided by catering if if we give that uh, food section to the catering then there is no need for us to appoint one person to bring groceries and the vegetables and the non veg okay so if we know that functions of the catering then these three persons are replaced by the catering so in the same way if the interface knows what are the functions provided by the lower layer to the upper layer then it is easy to decide how many layers are to be included in a network architecture so clear cut interface definitions not only minimize the amount of information that must be passed between the layers but it also makes it simple to replace the implementation of one layer with a completely different one so if we use a, a catering section if then we can replace the person who wants to bring groceries vegetables and the non veg okay so those clear cut interface definitions must be known while this while designing a network architecture next one the layer entity carries out its functions using the services provided by the lower layer again i want to show another diagram so i had already told you this is the layer n plus 1 and this is the layer n so here n means for example 1 then this is layer 1 and this n plus 1 is layer 2 in between there there is an interface the data always transfer from higher layer to the lower layer okay so services are always provided by the lower layer to the upper layer but the data is always transferred from upper layer to the lower layer through sap sap means service access point so through this service access point the data in layer 2 is transmitted to the layer 1 so what is idu here idu means interface data unit this interface data unit consists of two components that is ici ici means interface control information and sdu means service data unit so this service data unit actually consists of the information and this interface communication interface communication control information consists of the control information from which layer the data is coming so those information is in this and the actual data is in sdu so from layer 2 to layer 1 it is transmitted through sap so here again it is divided here okay so this is interface control information and this is service data unit and here this is the protocol data unit this protocol data unit is transmitted between the same layers of different machines okay so a layer entity carries out its functions using the service provided by the lower layer these are services between the adjacent layer entities provided through a service access point uh, in a typical interface idu interface data unit it consists of service data unit and interface control information so it will be better understood with one example i will explain that one so look at here so here this is the source machine and this is the destination machine the source machine consists of five layers and the destination machine also consists of five machine no, five layers here the message m has to be reached to the destination machine so first the, this message is reached to i had already told you the data is transmitted from upper layer to the lower layer so message m from layer 5 is transmitted to layer 4 so here this is the message m but here this layer 4 adds some header since this is the fourth layer this is h4 so this is interface control information and this m is a service data unit okay so next here this message m is divided into two parts m1 and m2 when it reaches the third layer okay so here the message is split into m1 and here there is a header h4 
and since this is the layer 3 here another header h3 is added so it becomes h3 h4 m1 and here the message is divided into two parts m1 and m2 so this is m2 and here header h3 is added now this data is again transmitted to the lower layer 2 so here the same thing h3 h4 m1 and since it is the layer 2 header h2 is added here and here trailer t2 is also added since it is the second layer this is trailer t2 next look at here the same thing h3 m2 here since this is the second layer header h2 is added and a trailer t2 is added then it reaches the layer one and it travels through the physical medium and it reaches the destination machine in the destination machine it reaches the layer two and from layer okay i'm going to conclude from layer two to it reaches to layer three here the trailer is removed when it goes to layer four the header is removed and when it reaches finally it reaches yeah so in this way the information flows from source machine to destination machine via virtual communication so this is about protocol hierarchies okay thank you you can leave the meeting